Hey, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips for new college instructors, especially ed tech more recently. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe below. Today is basically my third part for Mac users. So I already have tutorials about using QuickTime to create just a video experience, but also a digital whiteboard and also a dot cam at your home. And then the video after that was about an iMovie tutorial for video editing. And so I'm wrapping up today with a video about using Keynote to add illustrations and special effects to your video lessons. So I do end the video with a quick nod to how I do it on Google Slides, um, but the focus here is on using Keynote to create these illustrations using the green screen function. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Keynote app and show you how this works. Okay, so I have Keynote open and I create a new presentation. Yeah, I go to basic and just do the blank one. And then once that's there, I just have to delete what's already on the page. So you just go ahead and click on each element and delete them. Once you have the blank page, we're going to go ahead to the top right here to that little paintbrush tool. And we're going to change the background color to a green. Okay. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and tap the thumbnail and click copy. And then go ahead and paste a few just so we have a few slides to work with. Okay, so this is our green screen background. So everything that's green will not appear on a video clip once you add it into iMovie and you do your editing or whatever software tool you're using. You can also go ahead and click presentation 11 and then if you tap on it for a second, you can rename it to whatever you'd like. Okay. Um, but then, so that's how you set up the page. Now keep in mind, because I use a template, it's already the dimensions of a YouTube thumbnail. So on the top right here, the little ellipses, if you go to document setup, you can see, you can change all to the background again, but down here you see slide size. So 16 by nine is the correct one for YouTube, but there are other options and you can customize your own as well. To, you know, so if you're doing videos for something other than YouTube, you can go ahead and change the dimensions as needed. And then I'll click done here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few examples that I, I already created, and then I'll show you how I created them. So first off, one thing that you can do on Keynote or Google Slides that you can't do on iMovie is that you can add in, you know, more fonts quite easily as well as position them on the screen as you'd like. So the title options on iMovie gives you a certain number of them, but they kind of tend to be pretty static, right? Like it has to go here or has to go there, or this is, you know, how it zooms in and zooms out, whatever the case may be. So with Keynote or with Google Slides, you can use different fonts that aren't available um, automatically on whatever software you're using to edit your videos. So here, for example, I have, you know, let's say you're speaking and in the background is either like a white wall or you're actually just doing like a, a white piece of paper, right, as your background when you're speaking. Well, then you can just have, you know, in this case, code switching and there's no background behind it because I know that it will appear totally fine to the eye because you know there's going to be a blank wall behind it when I add it to the video okay and so here just like to show you you can click and so on keynote you can change you know if you use your two fingers you can kind of pinch you can change you know the angle of the writing which is great okay very easily um, and so, you know, when you click into it, you can see here, again, you go to this little paintbrush in order to edit things. And so if you edit the text, you can choose the font you want. Do you want to bold it, italicize it, et cetera, right? Um, the color of it, the size, and basically there's quite a few options here. Okay. So you can have here just the word, right? So, and then maybe you're speaking an example of code switching, or you can actually have Again, you know, with iMovie, you can't add more than one title to the same scene. So you can't add, you know, multiple layers of text at one time. Uh, and so what you can do here is, well, if you have the one that's just the one word, then you have one that has, you know, example one, for example, 
then you can go ahead and add the different pages to your video and it transitions very easily from just code switching to code switching example one at the exact place that you want to do that. So I'll go ahead and show you an example of that, you know, now. All right, to show you here how you add it to, you know, in my case, iMovie. So let me just elongate this. So here's a video where I'm talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, let's just take from here to here and get rid of the rest of that. And you can see a tutorial of how to edit videos using iMovie. I've linked it below. So I do have one of those already set up. Okay, so here's me talking. And like I mentioned before, I have the white wall behind me. So here is, I exported the keynote slides. And so I can just lengthen this. And for example, I have here code switching and then a little further example one code switching. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in between before you get example one and command B to cut that up. And now here's point of view. So I'll do command B again to cut that one up. And point of view disappears, command B, okay? And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the spot of you speaking where you wanna have the text appear. So let's say I wanna have code switching appear right there when I'm speaking. You notice that when the video plays, it switches to the whole screen being green. So you're gonna click what you've added, the code switching, and then over here, on the overlay, instead of cutaway, you wanna click green, blue screen. Once you do that, the green disappears and now you see the video behind it. So now you can see here it pop up and then it goes away, okay? And so you can do it that way. Of course, again, I had cut up this example one and you can add it right behind it. So let's say at, at this point, you start talking about the first example about code switching. So now you have it playing, code switching pops up, I'm giving the definition, where the case may be, and I'm saying, you know, for example, and then now, you know, example one pops up. And so again, you just click into it, do the overlay, and do a green and blue screen, and it pops up fine. Let's say though that you are just gonna record a video of you speaking and your background is not like a blank wall. You know, it has a bookshelf behind it or a painting or whatever the case may be. Now in this case, what I've done is I've added a little background to the POV so that it, I, I make sure that it pops up on the, whatever image I have in the video. And so in this case, it's again, you know, I'm teaching literature class and I'm talking about point of view and the definition and examples of it. I can go ahead and have it, you know, appear on my screen for my students to see. And then here is a list, right? So let's say we're comparing Snow White, Ariel, and Cinderella in my fairy tale unit. I can have those on the, on the screen as well. And then something you need to consider is that Keynote has a lot of different uh, shapes. And so for example, when you go to the plus sign on the top here and you go um, all the way to the third one, so shapes here, you can see here, that's, you know, right here is where I got that one. But let me delete that. You also have a lot of different objects here. So if you're teaching geometry, there's, you know, if you're teaching fashion or, you know, biology with animals, nature, you know, there's definitely a lot going on here as far as different images goes. And so you can go ahead and see, you know, okay, you know, I'm talking about the ethics of something or about law. You can have different images pop up on your screen as well. And so again, once you click into it and you click the paintbrush, you can change, if you go to style here, the color of, there you go to whatever you want. So you're gonna to have to know what the color is of your background, the one that is gonna be actually behind the green screen. Now, a few other things I wanna show you here. So I had these two examples of just, okay, you're gonna have words appear on the screen, but you can also add special effects to the keynote slides. So I'm gonna go ahead and click 
the present button here, the play button to show you what I mean. And so for this one, you see that I have these transitions created for that particular point of view. It dropped down, it got bigger, and after a few seconds, it disappeared, right? And so you can have a special effect. And then also, if I click again, you see Snow White comes in, Ariel, Cinderella, and then they disappear in a second. And so that, you know, if I'm just, I know I'm gonna be talking, I know I'm gonna say, all right, you know, for today's homework, we're gonna compare Snow White, Ariel, and Cinderella and their relationships with their family. If I know that, I can, I can just add this little, you know, animation and pop it up onto my video screen to get that more visual effect for students to be paying attention. And I can also add, you know, an audio effect, a little bell transition or a little golf club hit or, you know, whatever you choose to use. And you know, I show you how to do that on my video about iMovie editing. And so you can, again, make your videos more engaging. So those are a few examples of how you can use Keynote. And again, those are, I, I showed you already having done them. So I just opened up a new blank screen and I'm gonna go ahead and show you quickly how you can do your own versions of this. So of course with these, I don't have to really show you because it's literally just adding text and then deciding on the font size and the placement. But I do want to show you for these two, the adding special effects, how that works. And so here we go. We're going to go plus sign and we're going to add, you know what, let's actually add an image here. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here. Maybe I'm cooking, I'm teaching a class about healthy eating. Okay, and so I want my chef's hat to appear on the screen. So I have that. I go ahead and click the paintbrush. And I'm gonna go and gonna go ahead and change, you know, the color of a few things. Okay, so I know, for example, that my background wall is going to be white. Um, so you know, any color will be fine, basically. So I'm gonna keep it blue. And then, you know, I don't really need any of these, but I can see here, you know, a little shadow I'll add just to give it a bit more texture. Okay, and then I can obviously resize it to however I'd like and change the angle if I want to as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. So what you do is, once you click into it, you'll get this little taskbar and you wanna click animate. Once you do that, on the bottom you see add build in, add action, and add build out. So build in is basically the animation that occurs in order for it to appear on the screen. And an action is just what happens when it's on the screen, and then add build out is what happens to get it to, dis to disappear from the screen. So when you click add build in, you're gonna see a lot of various options here. And what's great is that when you click one, it shows you what it does. So if I click fly in, that's how that appears. If I click keyboard, that's how that appears. If I say move in, which is what I use for the Cinderella ones, all right, move in. So you can go through and click which one do you like to use as a way for it to actually appear on your screen. So let's say twist and scale. Okay, so I'll have that one. Now I exit out of here on the bottom left. And then now I'm gonna click twist and scale again. Because that way you can see how long the duration you want it to be, how long does it take for it to appear. Is it going clockwise or counterclockwise? The important part here though is the start. Rather than have it start on tap, I'm gonna go ahead and click after transition. Because that means it starts automatically when you transition from the slide above it to this one in particular. Okay, And then I'm not gonna add a delay. So I'll go ahead and exit out by tapping on the three anywhere else. And now I'm going to add an action. And so for this, again, now there's different options. So this is when it's already on screen. Do you want it to blink, for example? That's what it will do. Do you want it to, you know, jiggle? Right? Okay. So, and you can choose whatever you want here as well. A little advanced option is create path. And you actually draw the path that you want the image or the word to take. So let's say you want it to go around the screen somehow. You'd go ahead and click where the little circle is. And you say, I want it to go this way. And then I want it to go this way. And then I want it to go here. Okay. And so it will show you how it's going to appear on the screen. 
okay? And then I click done. So now I have that for motion path. And again, I click motion path and I say, rather than doing it on tap, we're gonna start after build one because build one is the move in build, right? How it appears on the screen and no delay again. So I'm gonna go ahead again and tap outside, go back on the left here, the bottom left. And now we're gonna add a build out. And so what's gonna happen to get it to disappear? Is it gonna shimmer out, right? Once it appears over there, or do you wanna do something different? Do you want it to fade and move? Okay, so let's say I'm gonna do fade and move. All right, on the bottom left here, exit out, click fade and move. And once again, go down and have it start after build two and then click done. And so now when you go ahead, let's say to the one above and click present the little play button. Now when you tap it, the animation is gonna start automatically. So it appears, it goes around the screen and then it disappears, okay? And so now you've created exactly what you wanted for your animated element. So tap again and exit out. And so obviously you can play around with this. So if you click the chef's hat again and click animate. For each of these, let's say motion path, you can click on it and say, you know what? I want you to go slower. I want you to go faster, right? So you can choose. So that's how you animate images or words. You can choose, you know, what, how to build it in, what actions to take in the middle and how to build it out. All you need to do is to create a new presentation and then just get rid of the boxes that are already there. And then you want to go to background and change the color to green. And then just click done. And then for that one, you're going to just go ahead and uh, copy and paste or duplicate slide, either way is fine. And then once you have that color, then you're just going to add text or images and animate it as you would on a regular Google slide. So for example, you can go ahead and insert a text box. And then once you do that and change the style and whatever you'd like in it, if you go ahead and right click, you'll see animate and here's where you add the animations. So fading in, flying from the left. Do you want it to be on the click or after previous? Do you want to add more than one animation to the same word? Whatever the case may be. So that's how you do it, you know, in the basic way of doing it on Google Slides if you don't have Keynote. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up below and let me know. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about using Keynote in this way, you can go ahead and let me know below and I'll answer you as soon as possible. I'll see you next week with new videos.